Hi guys, we are going to create a navigator platform here in Microsoft PowerPoint. First, we are going to insert the shape. We are going to use the rectangle or the square. Click on shape fill. Choose this color. Next is click on shape outline. Remove the outline. Click on shape effects. Go to 3D rotation and choose this one, isometric top up. Shape effects again, 3D rotation and 3D rotation options. This time we are going to click on 3D format, change the height to something like 20 points, remove the width or make it zero. There you go. So up next is we are going to create or insert an ellipse, an oval or a circle, whatever you're going to call it. Click on shape fill again, change the color to gray and remove the outline. That's it. Up next is we are going to use icons, so I'm going to provide the link on the description for these icons. <clears throat> so I'm going to choose this icon right here, place it here, then change the color to something like white. Highlight both of them, click on arrange, align to center, then arrange again, align middle. That's it. Now once you're done with it, I'm going to insert another shape. This time, I'm going to choose something like this one, the arrow. Click and drag. Okay. Then I'm just going to move this one a little bit down. Then another arrow in this area. That's it. I'm going to highlight both of the arrows. Click on shape outline. Change the color to something like light gray then change the cap type to something like round round everything then what else for this one i'm going to choose the round end so that will do i'm going to highlight both of them again so begin type will be round or just this one okay that will do up next is click on insert text box so i'm going to type just a dummy data here so this graphic is best if you're going to introduce a particular company let's say about the company what are the services of a particular company so these are some of the graphics that are best for company introductions instead of uh, using bullets instead of using images this one is non-copyrighted and you are assured that this one is original so I'm just going to change the alignment. I'm trying to tweak it here, um, trying to make sure that everything would look great. So I think this one will do or make it center. Then I'm just going to change maybe the size of the text for the about us. Maybe I'm just going to reduce it to something like this. I think there you go. So we have just created one element then i'm just going to duplicate it by pressing my control key on my keyboard or command key on my mac then drag and automatically you have the duplicate of those elements okay this time we are going to provide color to our graphics so first we are going to visit a particular website this one is color.adobe.com click on trends in here you will see different categories of color palettes we call this one as color palettes or different shades of color so for me let's say i'm going to choose this one game design the axi before you can download it be sure that you already have signed into your adobe account you can use your gmail account to sign in it's for free so i've already downloaded a file then i'm just going to drag it over here so this will serve as my color reference so whichever reference you wish to choose is for free. So it's better if you have the reference so that you will know that whatever you're trying to design, you still have a reference that it would look great. So the first thing that we are going to do is just to change the gradient fill of our background. So here, these are the so-called gradient stops. On the gradient stops, you can change the color from here. Click on eyedropper and choose the colors from the reference that we have here so for example if i wish to change the color of this one click on eyedropper 
then click on this color but it's kind of dark so i'm just going to change this one to something like this color lighter so as you can see if i'm going to move the slider uh it will change the gradient next is the shape so if i'm going to change the shape format or the color click on the eyedropper tool again then choose a particular color let's say this one same thing with the circle click on shape fill there you go so since it already has the color memory so it retains the color that you have just clicked previously there you go i'm going to change the width to something like 1.75 so that it will be visible then of course the font or the text i'm going to change it to white this one again click on shape format click on shape fill then eyedropper i'm going to choose orange there you go i'm going to change the color of the text to white again same process to the other one click on shape format shape fill eyedropper for the first time then click on green then for this one since there's a color memory already i'm just going to choose it this one i'm going to change this one to white same thing there you go so i forgot to change the color of the arrows first i'm going to thicken this one a little bit click on shape format shape outline change it to orange and this one we are going to change the width again 1.5 will do change it to green that's it so that is how you're going to change the theme of your design all original this time we're going to provide animation to our graphics first i'm going to click on the platform click animations tab and maybe i'm going to choose this one float in so clicking on float in will provide this kind of animation but i need to change the effect options or the so-called direction for the floating in so click on effect options and i'm going to choose float down there you go now up next is since i'm not going to move everything here so i need to select each one of them and group them into one so i'm just going to right click somewhere here click on group then choose group there you go so this will be grouped into one and animate this as one so click on wipe there you go so that's how it's going to look like up next is we are going to preview this one if it looks good so click on slideshow then maybe i'm just going to choose from current slide anyway it's the same so click first animation click second animation so that's how it's going to work but the thing is i want it or this one right here to go after or animate after the first one so i need to change under animation pane the animation order or not animation order but instead this one should automatically run or yeah start after the previous animation so by clicking on this one i'm just going to click here then maybe we can preview this one and automatically it will animate but we're just going to animate the others let's make this one fast highlighting them group same thing as what we did with the first one i'm just trying to make this one fast guys so that it will not bore you so highlight this one so if of course the tutorial is kind of fast you can always pause it and replay it click on start after previews there you go so let's try to preview our animation click on slideshow so maybe from beginning will do so by the time i'm going to click on the first automatically the second object will animate there you go click again and its second object will animate that's how it's going to provide an animation or a preview now in here here's the final project that i have created for you guys this is how it should supposed to look like once it will be published so I've created the name or dummy name of a particular company, then the navigator platform, the name of the template. There you go. So it's like about us, our services, our projects, and contact us. Okay, so that's how you're going to create an animation. And of course, customize graphics in PowerPoint. Okay, this time we are going to create a new slide. 
for another graphic idea. So first I'm going to change the background under designs, click on format background. So I'm just going to use this one. So I'm just going to click on apply to all. That's it, there you go. So remove all the unnecessary elements since we are going to start from scratch. This time I'm going to insert from shapes, I'm going to use this one, the isosceles triangle. Let's resize this one to something like this. There you go. Up next is I'm going to choose rectangle. So this will serve as the trimmer. So I'm going to trim this triangle right here. So resize it. That's it. I'm going to duplicate it by just pressing my command key on my Mac or control key on my keyboard and drag it. Highlight all of them. Then click on shape format then click on merge shapes and choose fragment afterwards i'm going to delete all the unnecessary shapes and as you can see automatically the triangle has been trimmed once it's been trimmed down we're not yet done uh, what we're going to do next is we are going to highlight this triangle right here all of them i mean then hold my control key or command key on my Mac or control key on my Windows, I mean. There you go, to create a duplicate. Then highlight the other one. I'm just going to move it somewhere on the side. Now this one will serve as the transparency effect. So I'm going to use or insert another shape. Same thing, I'm going to use the rectangle as my trimmer. I'm going to draw it here. No, I, uh, I think I need to flip it on the other side. Over here, there you go. So highlight both of them again. Click on Merge Shapes, then click on Fragment. Same thing, remove or I'm going to highlight all the unnecessary elements. Then that's it. So I'm going to overlap it over here, but before I'm going to overlap it, I need to change its color to something like white. That's it. You can play with the transparency over the slider. If you think that it's already okay, then that's good to go. Of course, I need to remove the shape outline. Click no outline. Then for this one, I'm going to use the previously created theme colors. So for this, that's light blue. So it's since it's already on my color memory, so I don't need to look for the reference anymore. Same with this green and this one. To make it safe, I'm just going to use the dark gray color. Oh, which one should it be? There you go. Now with this, since we are done with the transparency so i need to change the transparency effect a little bit maybe lower that will do so as you can see we already have created a pyramid so i just removed the outline for everything else up next is we are going to create something like this the one that we have created a while ago Click on insert shapes and I need to draw another circle here, duplicate them so that we don't need to draw each one of them anymore. Highlight all of them, then go to align, choose align center. There you go. So we're going to color each one of them. So we have it from our color memory. Remove the outline, same with the others. That's it. This one also. And the last one. I'm getting confused with the gray. Up next is, of course, we need to 
insert a couple of icons same thing so since the link is under the description for these icons this will serve as your guide or your reference so that you're not you don't need to download anything or any images from google anymore so i'm going to choose four different icons and paste it here change the color to white then all i need to do now is just to drag each one of them to our circles this time i'm going to insert a line actually this is like a connector you can snap it on the nodes highlight both of them so that it will be grouped as one same thing with this one that's it so as you can see if I'm going to move it automatically it will move along with the line so this one is kind of stubborn a little bit but it's okay I'm going to select all of the lines highlight all of them again I'm going to change the alignment to center there I'm going to insert a couple of text so since this is some sort of an information pyramid so I'm going to use uh, the elements for information Let's make this one fast. And there you go. So up next, if you think everything is good to go already, so we can group these elements into one. Each one of them, of course so that will be per level so for this one i'm going to click on group this one i think these are groups already same thing with this okay so you can group them then you can just press ctrl g or command g on your keyboard if you wish to group each of these elements so that by the time you're going to animate them they are grouped as one just like this one click on animation I'm going to choose float in then change the effect options to down of course the wipe same thing effect options it should be from left let's make this one fast again I think that's it so all we need to do now is just to check on our animation pane so always the second one should be uh, changed to something like start after previews the second element just like this one this is the second element there you go so let's try to preview our slide it would look like this this and that one okay now i already have created the final output so it would look like something like this let's try to preview this one so by the time i'm going to click okay so that's the description click next description click the description will follow and the last one so that is how you are going to create a pyramid in powerpoint okay this time we are going to create another graphic it is called the mayan pyramid graphic so it is like a basic triangle but it's kind of hybrid okay so it's like 
a hybrid of our navigational platform and the basic triangle. So what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to create layers of squares. So I'm just going to resize them according to my preference. So I just inserted three squares here, duplicate them. Actually, I'm going to create four. Just make an estimate on each one of them. It won't matter. Now once it's done, you can highlight all of them. Then click on Shape Format, then go to Shape Effects. Click on 3D Rotation, then that's it. Same thing on this area, you can change the height to something like 50 point. Remove the width, make it 0. And for this one, just subtract it by, one, by 10. 40 point, that would be 0. Continue with the other squares and the last one. There you go. And we can just manually move this one down. Same thing with this and or maybe I can just highlight all of them. Then let's group all of them first because I want to change the size. It would be easier this way. Then you can ungroup them once you are satisfied with that particular size. Up next is we are going to change, of course, the shape color. Using our color memory here. So for this, I need to change it to something like darker gray. With this one, you are going to change two different shades the sides and the top. However, since we already have our color memory, so it would be easier for us to change them. Same with the top. There you go. That's it. So you can adjust each one of them if you want. You can just use the arrow key on your keyboard to adjust each one of them. For this one, maybe a little bit downwards. Okay. Highlight all of them. So this time, I'm just going to copy whatever is in here. So I'm just going to highlight each one of these elements. Control C. Then paste it here. This time, we are going to flip it by clicking on Arrange. Go to Rotate and choose Flip Horizontal. If you want to properly point each one of them, you need to ungroup each of these elements. So just point the tip to the nodes so that it will connect with the shape. Make sure that you have ungrouped them, then later on you can just group them again. Let's move the text so that it would still be very readable and a couple of tweaking on the positioning let's make this one fast now once it's done this is how it's going to look like this is the final product i have created a while ago so this is called the mayan pyramid graphic So that's it. Hi everyone, this time we are going to create another slide. So we are going to create a graphic called Inspirational Tree Graphic. So first is we are going to open our browser. It's because we are going to use a particular site from which we can get these inspirational graphics. We are going to use vectz.com, okay? So I'm going to use or search for tree with leaves. So make sure that you have downloaded or you have searched a free version. So this one will do. Click on free download. Wait for it to be downloaded. 
then that's it once it's already downloaded you can find it on your folder then extract the zip file and you will see the EPS, EPS file over here up next is we are going to open another site it's called cloudconvert.com now once cloudconvert.com is here just click on select file and select your EPS file on the convert to option choose a vector choose EMF then click on convert wait for it to be uploaded on the, their server then click on the download button once downloaded what we're going to do next is open our PowerPoint and import that downloaded EPS file or EMF file, the converted one. So in here, we can right click and click on ungroup. Click yes and ungroup it again by right clicking in there. Group and group. There you go. So remove the background, the white background. So you can highlight all of them and drag them to the other side. For this one, I think I have not highlighted them well. So I'm going to highlight all of them again. Then drag them on the side. So the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to zoom it in a little bit. So this is the hard part. It's because we are going to select leaves. Okay, so we are going to hold my shift key and click on leaves individually. Not all of them, but a few. So once you're done, you can change the color so that it would be easier for us to see um, which set of leaves we have already uh, selected. Then Control G to group our leaves. Later on, we're going to change the color once we're done with everything else. So this is, or these are the leaves that we have selected a while ago. So we are going to select another batch of leaves. Now, if, if in any case you have mistakenly selected a particular leaf you can just simply click on that one again and it will be unselected so let's make this one fast change the color to red then group them again so i think i need to add a couple more leaf here i have some one or something here that is not yet selected so i'm going to select some of them be sure to hold your shift key if you want to do that then control G to group them. There you go. Up next is I'm going to select the third and last batch of our leaves. I can change the color to something like yellow. That will do. Then control G. So I think that's it. We're done. Now the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to select the purple batch of leaves and change the color to green, the default color of our three leaves. Same thing with the red one. I'm going to change the color to lighter shade of green, then that's it. Now up next is we are going to deal with the animation. Of course, click on the animations tab. I'm going to choose float in. There you go. Then click on the next one or the first batch of leaves. Then I'm going to choose wipe. Click on the next batch of leaves just to make sure that I have clicked the right batch. Then click wipe again. Then the last batch would be the third batch. Click wipe. That's it. So let's try to preview them if it's working well. There. So far it's working fine. Now I'm going to preview it using the slideshow preview. Click click again and click on the last one that's it it's working fine now here's the out final output the inspirational growth tree graphic in microsoft powerpoint so that's it that's how you create an inspirational graphic tree in microsoft powerpoint Okay, this time we are going to create a timeline graphic in Microsoft PowerPoint. First, I'm going to insert a couple of circles here. So normal circles, let's just duplicate each one of them. Let's make this one a little bit faster. Highlight all of them. Then we are going to change the alignment to 
middle or bottom that will do then arrange align change to distribute horizontally up next is I'm going to change the shape format just remove the outline then individually I'm going to change the shape color based on the previous references that we've had so I'm going to use gray for that this one same will be green and this one will be orange and the last one will be this one the light cyan or light blue or whatever up next is we are going to insert the icon same thing it is uh, the link of these icons are on the description or if, or if not in the description then it should be on the comments area so I need to change the fill of this graphic to something like white and place it accordingly. Up next is I'm going to insert another circle. That's, this will serve as the transparency effect. So I need to resize this one so it fits well. So I'm just going to resize it and add a couple of centimeters here. Then I'm going to align center, then next is align middle, then afterwards I can just simply send to back. There you go. Change the shape fill to something like white and remove the outline. This time I'm going to play with the transparency. Click on more fill colors so I'm just going to drag the slider somewhere at 57% that will do. Then I can just click on that one and hold my control key and drag it on the other circles. Of course, we need to change the ordering, the arrangement of this one. So right click, send to back. Same with the others. That's it. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is just to insert a couple more shapes. So this time I'm going to use an arrow. So maybe that will do. I'm just going to duplicate it to each one of them. This time I'm going to change the outline style. Of course, I'm going to change it to dots, make it round. Change the thickness. So I'm going to make sure that this is as thick as possible. Change the transparency to make it look more blended. I think that will do. Up next is I'm going to place text boxes here. So since this is timeline, so I'm, I'm going to type years. Again, this is just a sample. Change the formatting. That will do. I'm going to duplicate each one of them. That's it, we've already created our timeline, so this time all we need to do is just to group each one of them so that it would be easier for us to animate or animate. This time we can animate. So all the second elements will be changed to start after previews. Then that's it. We've already created the timeline graphic in Microsoft PowerPoint. 
Okay, so this is the last part of our presentation. This time we are going to create three different slides. Because what we are going to do now is we are going to create a vertical timeline. Okay, so we are going to remove some of these unnecessary elements. Again, I'm going to insert a couple of icons here. So I'm going to choose any icon that I like. This time, I'm going to place each of these icons to different areas of the slides. So this will serve as the starting point of the timeline, this rocket right here. So I'm just going to organize each one of them. Up next is I'm going to insert a line. So this will serve as an indicator of our timeline. Change the thickness and of course change the dashes. More lines so that I can change the width and of course anything else here. Of course the color. Up next is I'm going to copy and paste it on the other, uh, what they call this, slide. Copy it again and paste it on the next one. Make sure that you are going to place the point at the edge of your slide. Then up next is I'm going to provide a couple of descriptions or caption on each of these elements here. So of course this is just a template so I'm trying to create just my personal notes or personal descriptions. Now let's try to test this one. I'm going to use the push effect on the transitions. Each of these pages or slides will have this type of transition. So if ever we are going to try to create a slideshow for this, this is how it's going to look like. Okay, so far so good. I think we need to change the positioning of the last element. Put it a little bit upwards. I'm going to add a new slide here. Maybe I can just place something like end. Remove this element right here. Then of course I need to change the font. Let's try it again. So far, so good. Okay, but on the last part, I think we need to provide transition on this. There. So that's it. That's how a timeline should look like.